unit one pour more. The technique we're going to be doing requires one additional supply and that's a damp paper towel. Um, this is another clean pour technique, so we're going to be pouring directly on our canvas. Uh, for this one, we want to make sure we apply a foundation layer. So we always want our foundation to be a light um, layer. It doesn't matter if it's black or dark colors, but we want it to be a very light layer of paint. Different people apply paint in different ways for a light layer. I've seen people use a blow dryer. I've seen people just tilt it until it's covered. I've seen people use their hands just to move it around. Um, I tend to like to use a trowel for it. I keep these around from like drywall trowels from the hardware store. So it's very easy to just move the paint until everything is covered. Make sure you've got that nice thin layer. Dab a little extra paint on where you need. Again, we don't want to scrape down to the canvas, so you're barely making connection with the paint to move it around. So if you were down on the canvas, you just end up taking all of your paint off. So we're just kind of floating along the surface a little bit. Unless we're using our non-dominant hand, and then it might be a little bit more messy. All right, and then you pick your colors that go on top of your bottom layer here. I just cannot get this corner with my non-dominant hand. All right. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna put them on in a spiral. We're gonna create a floral design here. So I'm using warm colors. So I'm gonna start in the center and I'm gonna create a spiral out to the edge. I'm gonna take my second color and do the same. I could do a third color. I've got some turquoise here, so I'll just toss it in there as well. You'll notice my hands are a little shaky and that's okay, because we're still gonna create something very pretty. So then I'm gonna gently tear off my paper towel here, try to make sure I have a clean edge instead of a ragged edge. So it's just a normal paper towel, nothing fancy. It's about the size of my eight by 10, which works perfectly for me. I've got just a little bit of water here. So I'm going to take my paper towel down into my water and then I'm going to squeeze it out really well because I don't want it wet, I just want it damp. And then to the side away from my paint, I'm gonna shake it out. And you can see, I think because I use a little extra flow trawl in my paint mixture, you can see some of the paint reacting to one another. All right, so I'm shaking my paper towel out until it's flat again, instead of balled up and crumpled. And then what I'm going to do is with precision, caution, I'm going to place this on my painting. Hopefully, <laughs> if I'm not too nervous to do it. All right, here we go. I'm just going to go from the edge, touch it down. Okay, so I want to make sure though that everything is connected to paint. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna dob, dob, dob. Make sure everything is attached to the paint, but not too much. to package my paper towel back up and move it off of the painting okay and how I'm going to do this is corner to corner to corner to corner side to side to side to side until I have a little package and then I'm going to lift up and off my painting 
So corner to corner. Side to side. And then there I can just lift it off and move it. And then again, we just sit and watch as the painting changes. This has a little bit of a swipe technique to it. So you start seeing those little changes in the paint. And you have that little rosette in the middle. And if I wanted to, I could come in and I could move it a little bit. It's not going to move a lot because it's relatively thin amount of paint. And there you go. That's a really fun little painting to do. Again, these kind of paintings are ones that uh, my kiddos, even including my teenagers, really like to do these kinds of paintings. So I hope you enjoy. Get to pouring.